let's talk about limits. What exactly is a limit? So let's say if we want to find the limit as x approaches 2 of the function x squared minus 4 divided by x minus 2. Now, this is different than plugging in 2. If you want to find the value of the function when x is 2, you would substitute. This would be 2 squared minus 4 divided by 2 minus 2. 2 squared is 4. And 4 minus 4 is 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. 0 over 0, we don't know what that is. It could be 0, it could be infinity, it could be undefined, it could be 8. We don't know. So the function is not defined at 2. When x is 2, we don't have a specific value. However, as x approaches 2, it does converge to a specific value. Let me explain. So let's plug in a number that is not exactly 2, but something that's close to 2. And let's make a table. So we're going to have our x values and the values of the function. So let's just try 1.9. one point nine squared minus four divided by one point nine minus two. What does that equal? If you type that in your calculator, you should get three point nine. Now let's pick a number that's even closer to two. For example, one point ninety nine. And let's see what's gonna happen. Type this in your calculator too. See what answer you get. This will give you 3.99. Now let's try 1.99. Well, 1.999. Do you see a pattern? What number is the limit converging to? This is equal to 3.999. So notice that as x approaches 2, the expression x squared minus 4 over x minus 2, it approaches the number 4. It gets closer and closer to 4. So therefore, the limit is 4. Evaluate the limit as x approaches 3 of x cubed minus 27 divided by x minus 3. Now we can't use direct substitution. If we plug in 3 the way it is, this will give us 0 divided by 0, which is indeterminate and we can't find the value of that, so we're not going to do it that way. Instead, let's plug in numbers that are very close to 3. So let's start with 2.9. 2.9 to the third power minus 27 divided by 2.9 minus 3. When you type this in, feel free to use parentheses if you're not getting the answer that I have. So this will give you 26.11. Now, what about when x gets closer to 3? Let's try 2.99. Let's see if it converges to a specific value. So this will give you 26.91. And if we try 2.999, let's see what's going to happen. By now, you can see the answer. So 
So this is going to be 26.99. So therefore, we can see that as x approaches 3, as it gets closer and closer to 3, the y value approaches 27. So therefore, the limit as x approaches 3 of x cubed minus 27 over x minus 3 is equal to 27. What is the limit as x approaches 3 of the function x squared plus 7x plus 3? So we need to find the limit of this polynomial function. How can we do so? Well, the first thing that you should try to do is a direct substitution. Plug in 3. If you don't get a 0 on the bottom of a fraction, then you should be fine. In this case, there is no fraction, so we don't have to worry about that. So we can use direct substitution to evaluate uh, this limit analytically. So if we plug in 3, it's going to be 3 squared plus 7 times 3 plus 3. 3 squared is 9. 7 times 3, that's 21. And 9 plus 21 is 30. And 30 plus 3 is 33. So therefore, the limit as x approaches 3 for this function is 33. So as you can see, direct substitution is a nice technique. Hopefully, you'll get more questions like this on the test. Let's try another example. Let's say if the limit as x approaches 5. Let's find it given this rational function, x squared minus 3x plus 4, divided by x plus 2. So let's go ahead and use direct substitution. So this is going to be 5 squared minus 3 times 5 plus 4, divided by 5 plus 2. 5 squared, that's 25. 3 times 5 is 15. And 5 plus 2 is 7. 25 minus 15 is 10. 10 plus 4 is 14. So we got 14 divided by 7, which in the end is equal to 2. What is the limit as x approaches 2, square root x plus 7, divided by x plus 1? Go ahead and use direct substitution to get the answer. So this is going to be the square root of 2 plus 7, divided by 2 plus 1. Now 2 plus 7 is 9, and 2 plus 1 is 3. The square root of 9 is 3, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. So that's the answer. As you can see, direct substitution is a nice, simple, and easy technique to use. What is the limit of this particular trigonometric function? Sine x as x approaches pi over 4. Now, what is that equal to? Now, it might be helpful to know what pi over 4 is in degrees. To convert radians to degrees, multiply it by 180 over pi. So notice that the pi values cancel. 180 divided by 4 is 45 degrees. So basically, you can plug in pi over 4 or 45. So what is sine 45? Using a unit circle, it's equal to the square root of 2 divided by 2. You can also use your calculator to get that answer. Let's try another example. What is the limit as x approaches pi over 3? of the function of tangent x. Now tangent is equivalent to sine divided by cosine. So we could use direct substitution again. So this is going to be sine pi over 3 divided by cosine pi over 3. So what is sine pi over 3? Pi over 3 is 60 by the way. 180 is the same as pi. So 180 over 3 is 60. Sine 60 is root 3 divided by 2. Cosine 60 is 1 half. So if we multiply the top and the bottom by 2, these two will cancel. And we're going to get the square root of 3 on top. And 2 times a half is 1. So the final answer is root 3. Now what about this one? The limit as x approaches pi over 6 of the function secant x. Now secant is equivalent to 1 divided by cosine. So we can use direct substitution. 
What is cosine pi divided by 6? Pi over 6, or 180 divided by 6, is 30. Cosine 30 is root 3 divided by 2. Now, what is 1 divided by root 3 over 2? To figure this out, you can multiply the top and the bottom by 2. So on top, 1 times 2 is 2. On the bottom, the 2's cancel, so we have this 2 divided by root 3. Now we need to rationalize it. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is 3. So this is the answer, 2 root 3 divided by 3.